What's going on everybody? We're back and we're excited. We just finished a message entitled, It's Complicated. Sometimes in life, we make ourselves sick because we have a hope deficiency. Have you ever been going through something so long because it seemed like God had delayed it, that you felt like you denied it? And do you remember how you felt? How you felt deflated? Well, I wanna help you to get through that process. Watch this, if the enemy can get victory over your heart, he'll get victory over your life. And I believe that you're more than a conqueror through Christ who loved you and gave his life for you. And we wanna help you and equip you to be able to handle the opposition of the enemy. I also wanna extend an invitation for you to be a part of our community. We have purpose in our heart to connect with God, others and purpose and this is one of the ways you can get exclusive information you can become a part of our virtual community and we can grow together so check that out right now i want to thank you in advance for your subscription for your shares for your likes for your views and also from your financial contributions you help us to get the gospel of jesus christ out to a world and I believe when you advance his kingdom that he'll advance you because God will return every seed you've sown because God has proven again and again that he's faithful so I want to encourage you to continue to grow in the things of God let this message be a means of encouragement know that we're praying for you and we ask that you continue to pray for our ministry listen i want you to have a great evening great afternoon great morning have a great day and we look forward to seeing you really soon god bless peace let's turn our bibles to proverbs chapter 13 verse 12 proverbs chapter 13 verse 12. it reads Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. It seems to suggest that we can make ourselves sick. And there are times that we really have to monitor our hearts because the heart is the center of control. It's where all of your beliefs are stored. And there are times where we have irregular heartbeats. Sometimes we have heart murmurs. And sometimes the heart ceases to function. The heart has its own rhythm, and that's fine and good until God seemingly is marching to the beat of a different drum. And I want you to know that's what makes our heart complicated. It's that our heart is how we experience life. And when we say complicated, we say sometimes it's difficult to analyze, understand, or explain. Let's have a moment. There are times in life where you don't even get you. I'm going to this side. I said there are times in your life where you don't even understand you. Paul says it's something like this. Whatever I would do good, evil is present. And I believe this. If your heart is sick long enough that your life will follow suit. So it's important that we begin to examine ourselves because what we believe determines how we experience life. And sometimes our beliefs cannot hold up against the opposition and the struggles that we face. And so the text says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. That means hope that is put off. That's hope that is postponed. Uh, deferred is when I thought I was preferred, but now I feel deterred. Yeah, that, that's what being deferred feels like. And watch this. When we're deferred, we'll place periods where God wanted commas. And we feel deferred. And so it's important um, that we understand that at times 
it's easier to face denial than to face delay. It's sometimes easier for God to tell us no than for him to tell us later. Especially when he does not give us an ETA, an estimated time of arrival. It tends to frustrate us. And most of our lives in the kingdom, it's a waiting game. I realize this, that when you're waiting on something, that sweethearts can become sick hearts. That your sweethearts can become sick hearts. It's like that with God. We start off optimistic, but as time goes on, our hearts begin to change. And I want to give you a symptom of a sick heart. Many times a sick heart is a hard heart. A sick heart is a hard heart. A sick heart is a hard heart. Heart, hard heart. Now, now we established weeks ago that your heart is supposed to be a sponge. But a sick heart is a hard heart. Now this is a pretty heart. That's so why most people won't object to having a heart like this. It has a shine on it. But the truth of the matter is that nothing can penetrate it. And again, when we have hard hearts, it's a means of protection. It's a defense mechanism because we don't want to be hurt any longer. So we tell God, proverbially, we say this, that I can do bad all by myself. Because we have a hard heart. Watch this. A hard heart many times is expressed in bitterness. This is what happens to Israel. Israel is in this predicament we see in Psalms, and, and the writer is speaking to them, and he says this. He says, for he is our God, and we are his people. Psalms 95, 7 through 9, the flock of his pasture, his sheep protected and nurtured by his hand. Today, if he speaks, hear his voice. Don't harden your hearts the way they did in the bitter uprising at Meribah, or like that Day they complained in the wilderness of Massa. Understand this, that God had brought them to a place of transition. They were in the wilderness, but they just didn't expect to stay in the wilderness as long as they did. And when you're in a dry place, when you're in a drought, the tendency is to become thirsty. And so they became thirsty. And watch this. They had an idea of what God should be doing, but God had another idea of what he should be doing. And watch this, they did not coincide. So when they get there, um, they began to become bitter because when they taste the water, the water doesn't taste like it should. So God has to work a miracle because of the bitter taste. And watch this, they become a byproduct of their environment. See, here's the temptation to become hard just because you went through a hard situation. Oh, can let me preach to this church for a second. I said hard situations create a temptation to be hard. I know we say we don't look like what we've been through and we say that prophetically, but the truth of the matter is many of us justify our hardness because we've been through a hard situation. But here's the challenge today. Can you remain soft even when you're going through what was hard? Isn't that the story of Joseph? That Joseph is able to remain soft and delicate and be in the place where God could use him even though he had gone through a hard situation. He had gone through betrayal. He had gone through being in the pit. He had gone through being in the prison. But yet, he was still there to serve. And yet, we have a hard heart, a pretty heart, but a hard heart. And a hard heart, it's an indication that our heart might be sick. Because isn't it what he tells us? He says, listen, you've had a heart of stone. But I want to replace your heart of stone with a heart of flesh. Because I want to be able to use your heart. But since you put a door on your heart and a lock on your heart, I can't get into your heart. 
And now watch this. As a believer, our heart should be sensitive because he says this. He says, I'm going to remove your old heart off sight before I put the new heart on the inside of you. See, when we were setting up this stage, they wanted to put two couches on the stage. And I said, that would be confusing. Why in the world would we need two couches? Because we only need one for the scenario that we're trying to create. But the truth of the matter is, some of us have two hearts. Or we still behave as if we have two hearts. And because we have two hearts, it causes us to be double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so watch this. He removes one so we can take another one. And then he says, I want you to write on the tablets of your heart. He said, then I want you to tie it around your neck. See, watch this. He told him to put the word on everything that was stiff. Because Israel was a stiff-necked people, so they needed something around their neck to cause them to move where they would normally be resistant. And then he said, put it on your heart. I want you to etch my law on your heart. The heart is the place of your emotions. He said, I want you to put my word on your emotions. Has anybody ever made a bad decision because you had a Carl Thomas moment and you were so emotional? Oh, they don't know that poet. Um, I'll think of some Christian poets in a second. But the truth of the matter is some of us have moments where we're emotional, but emotions are poor leaders and excellent followers. And so you have to get yourself together. I got to be honest, I've been through some things that's tempted my heart to be hard. In my mind, I was smart. But in reality, I was hard. Because when you're hard, it's just a protection mechanism from being hurt. Right. And so we have this hope deferred. And then we also have Dirty hearts. Everybody say dirty hearts. You're going to have a dirty heart. See, see, what you got to understand is this. That God can give you a new heart. But you have to maintain the health of your new heart. Yeah. For example, uh, if you have a car, you don't trade it in just because it's dirty. This is what David understood because David was a man after God's own heart. But yet, David, when he falls with Bathsheba, he doesn't say, give me a new heart. He says, create in me a clean heart. See, some of you, you, you got a sponge heart because this is a sponge too as well. But the truth of the matter is, it's dark because of what you've been going through. Because when you're waiting on God, you can involve yourself in some dirt. Right. When you're waiting on God, when you're waiting on Isaac, you can create an Ishmael. I want to talk to the real church that's done some dirt while you've been waiting on. Israel understands this because while Moses is getting the Ten Commandments, Israel is at the foot at the foot of the mountain creating idolatry because they got dirty while they were waiting on God. Isn't it a hard thing to stay clean while you're waiting on God? You've been waiting on God for a husband. You've been trying to walk in purity and that's a challenge because it seems like God is taking too long and even as we wait for the return of Jesus Christ, he's waiting and he's looking for a church that is without spot or wrinkle. It's a hard thing to stay clean while you're waiting it's hard to stay clean while you're waiting that's what happens David is waiting for the troops to come back home he gets dirty while he's waiting it doesn't mean you meant to get dirty but it happens while you're waiting you start complaining while you're waiting. You have thoughts like curse God and die while you're waiting. Like God, if you would have been here, I wouldn't have to bury my brother and get my hands dirty. But your delay put me in this frame of mind. 
Have anybody in here ever been tempted to be mad at God? And when you did wrong, you felt you were justified doing wrong because you took too long. I can't get a real church. I said, has anybody ever felt justified in doing wrong because God took too long? Yeah, you took too long. So I'm going to top myself off because you took too long. Yeah, yeah, that's a man that goes to this church and we, we've gone out to eat uh, many times. And, and the truth of the matter is, uh, it's Brother T-Berry. Uh, we, we, we were at a restaurant and, and the truth of the matter is, the waitress was taking too long to refill our cups. So Brother T-Berry gets up and refills himself. Now watch this. He jumps over protocol because he gets tired of waiting. And Snickers said it best, when you're hungry, you're not yourself. <laughs> Some of us realize that because when we look in the mirror, we don't even recognize ourselves. Somehow we got lost in the wait. Let me talk to this generation because sometimes you come to the altar and expect everything is going to turn around instantly. And yes, your soul's destination has turned around, but there's going to be some things that are going to take time before God can bring it into manifestation. And you got to be determined to stay clean until he comes through on his promise. Can I get about two or three people that don't mind waiting just to give God some praise right now? I got to be honest that there are times where my heart has been sick. It's been sick. It's been sick. If I got to go to another wedding, it's going to be sick. If I got to do another baby shower, it's going to be sick. If I got to go to another house dedication, I'm going to be sick. If I lose another friend, I'm going to be sick. If you've never been tempted to be sick, you've never really experienced loss. All of us have had moments where we felt sick while waiting on God. My heart got hard and my heart was dirty while I was waiting on God. Yeah, but many times what you're going through just shows you the nature of your heart. No, you can put three different objects in boiling water and you get three different results. If you put a potato in boiling water, the potato will get softer. But if you put an egg in boiling water, the egg will get harder. And if you put a tea bag in boiling water, it'll change its environment. The question is not what are you going through. The question is who are you and what you're going through. Because he reigns on the just and the unjust. Because all of us have a tendency to go sick when we've had delays. When we've had what seems to be a denial. How do you respond to life when it seems you've been deterred? Let me hurry to my seat. First of all, sick hearts, number one, needs to be heard. They need to be heard. They need to be heard. Sick hearts need to be heard. Now watch this. Israel's problem was they were not asking God's questions. They were questioning God. And God says, I've given you enough evidence to confirm who I am. 
You should feel safe because I'm the one that led you out of Egypt. You should feel safe because you would not even be in the wilderness if it wasn't for my hand splitting the Red Sea. So you should feel safe by now. I don't mind you asking questions, but you should be past questioning me. God, I don't know how you're going to heal me, but I'm convinced you're a healer. God, I don't know how you're going to deliver me, but I'm convinced you're a way maker. You got to know who God is. This is why he's working miracles, because he's trying to send you a message. But hard hearts can't even recognize the miracle. Sometimes I make myself sick. And sick people try to make other people sick. So Israel began to tempt and test the God that was testing them. This is why the old saints would say things like this. You can't make me doubt them because I know too much about them. See, every time something goes wrong in your life, you shouldn't question the existence of God. Then at times you're going to ask God, where are you? I know you're somewhere, but I need to know where you are. But you shouldn't question his existence because it's in him we live, we move, and we have our being. There's too much evidence around me that convinces me that God is real to question his existence. I might not understand his ways. I might not understand his nature. But he's done too much and been too much for me to question his existence. I don't mind you asking questions, but when you're questioning me, my integrity, that's problematic. When I was a cloud by day and a pillar by night for you, Israel, when I fed you by manna and I fed you in the wilderness, and now you're questioning my identity. I don't mind you asking questions. If you question my character, when I give you enough evidence, it's proof you've been resisting. Because if he healed you the last time, he can heal you again. Because whatever God is or was, he'll always be. This is why Job said, I know I have so much going on around my life. But I'm not going to question if God exists because the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Shall we receive good from God and not receive bad from God? I'm not questioning his identity, but he's giving me a revelation of who he is. And it's my job to go based upon what I know because based upon what I know, it's enough to sustain me from where I am. Yeah. Sometimes we go through some rough situations. But you got to be reminded by the evidence. You frustrated in the house they said you would never have. You're frustrated about kids they said you would never birth. You mad at coworkers at a job they said you would never be employed. Sometimes we mad at the evidence that God is real. Let me get out of here. So sick hearts need to be heard. You got to try not to attack your help when you're sick. Because hurt people hurt people. Then sick hearts need to be handled. Everybody say handled. Handle. Sick hearts need to be handled. Because sick hearts are also broken hearts. Yeah, sick hearts are broken hearts. They're hard hearts. Yes. They're dirty hearts. They're also broken hearts. That's what David understood. He said, you love a broken and contrary heart. But look at this. Broken hearts. For example, if this heart shattered, the reality of it is, it would be broken into pieces. And the pieces would be sharp. And so you have to handle the pieces with care. Because sometimes putting somebody else back together can pull you apart. Yeah. 
But yet somebody has to help me handle even the parts of me that cut people. And this is why we have to have grace in church. Because there's some sharp objects all around you. There's some people who are broken. And if you try to put them back together and don't think there's a risk of you being cut, you are naive. So what God's saying, listen, I don't mind bleeding for you because I bled for you. And I'll help you put together even the sharp stuff you don't like. I'll help you put together the fact that you feel rejected because you never knew your father. I'll help you put it back together. The fact that you didn't feel like you had support. The fact that people talked down on you. The fact that people said you were not beautiful and you were not fearful and wonderfully made. I want to help you put that back together. I know it's sharp. I know it's complicated. But you put your heart in the right hands. And the reason God can help you is because God doesn't need you to have a whole heart. He just needs your whole heart. Let me say it again. God doesn't need you to have a whole heart. He just needs your whole heart. So if you give God all the pieces, because he knows where you lost pieces, he'll put your heart back together. Can I get a witness? Anybody ever had a broken heart, but somehow the master, the potter, put your life back together again? I'm a living witness that God will put broken people back together again. Then they need to be healed. Now healing is a process. Healing is a process. Healing is a process. Healing doesn't happen overnight. You can't always wave a wand and see healing take place. Healing is a process. As they went, they were healed. See, the thing I love about broken things is when they're set back appropriately, they are stronger than they've ever been before. Can I prophesy to somebody? After God finishes healing you, you're going to be stronger than you've ever been before. After God finishes restoring you, you're going to look better than you've ever looked in your entire life because God God is faithful to do what he promised. I just know to heal people just to shout hallelujah. See, when he puts you back together, he doesn't put you back together with the same strength. This is why you have to be patient in the process. Because healing takes time after the fall. This is why you can't judge me prematurely because God's not through with me yet. He still put me back together. This is why he tells Peter, Peter, you're going to fail. But when you're restored, go strengthen your brothers. Peter wasn't strengthening anybody before the fall. But after the fall, he was strengthening his brothers. Because God's about to accelerate your cause when he puts his hand on you. Because if God couldn't make you better, he wouldn't touch you. I just shout, God, make me better. Healing is making you better. You may have to cry. You may be frustrated. But the healing is making you better. I don't even know why I come to church. I'm not even feeling church like this. But as you keep on coming, healing is making you better. I don't even know why I got to forgive them. Because the more you forgive them, the more God releases you. God's healing your heart. And it's making you better better. I don't know why I got to give to people who won't even give back to me because as you do that, God's making you better. And you got to ask yourself, do I want to be bitter or do I want to be better? And if I want to be better, I'll endure the process. I'll endure the hardship like a good soldier and I'll believe that God will do what he said he would do. Can I get a witness if you're not afraid to go through the process? don't get over somebody lying over you overnight. Healing. It's a process. See, some saints get me upset because when I share with them what I'm going through, they say, get over it. I am going to get over it, but I got to take steps to overcome it. I don't want to be in it longer than I have to be, but at the same time, I want the strength that God wanted me to acquire as a result of being in the situation. Because healing is a process. Let me ask you a question. 
and you came to church for two Sundays in a row, in a row but what would your life look like in a year? I think some of you quit prematurely because you don't see the results after two weeks. What would your life look like if you consistently followed Jesus for two years? You can't follow Jesus in your life and not get better. And then a sick heart needs to be hopeful. A hope deferred makes the heart sick. A heart that is lacking hope, a heart that hope is absent in will be sick. A heart that doesn't have hope is malnourished. A heart that does not have hope is sick. Okay. I close on this. You know, every now and then I make phone calls to handle business. You know, when I call the bank, I call different accounts um, because I believe God is a God that wants you to pay your bills. <laughs> if he paid your sin bill, you should pay your... Okay. So, so I call to check on my bills sometimes, to pay bills, huh, to eliminate bills. I got two class with the eliminate pills. Yeah, I don't need your services any longer. I don't even read those magazines any longer. But, but the truth of the matter is, I call. And every now and then, they'll tell me to hold. Don't you hate when you call? And they ask you to hold. And, and while I'm holding, sometimes they play music. And I put it on speakerphone because I cannot occupy all of my time. And sometimes I wait so long that I'm tired of hearing the same song. And some of you, that's how it is in life. You've been waiting for so long and you're tired of hearing the same song again and again. It seems like these companies will have multiple tracks, but they have one track. And you keep on hearing the same song again and again. Has anybody ever been on the phone so long you forgot why you were on the phone? Because you kept hearing the same song again and again. The thing I love about those calls, this is what makes me feel secure, is, is that when they answer the phone, the first thing they tell you is that this call is being recorded. Can I help you? Because some of you have made requests and you wonder if God remembers the conversation that you had. If evil men can record your conversation, how much more will your heavenly father record your conversation? The reason they record your conversation is for quality control. And I want you to know that heaven is concerned about its quality. And so even the things you could not verbalize, heaven translated and recorded. That's why no conversation with God is ever lost. I came to encourage somebody that the conversation you had, it was recorded. It was filed. I know you haven't seen the manifestation of it yet, but it's been filed. I know you're frustrated, but it's been filed. I know it seems like your circumstances are contrary to your faith, but it's been fouled. You know how I know it's fouled? Because we're going to have to give account for every idle word. If we got to give an account for idle words, how much more would God record our meaningful words? Now, they say we're recording this, so you got to be confident in the fact that God heard you. That's what he tells Dan. He said, I heard you the first time. 
He just said the mail service was slow getting it back because we ran into some opposition, some inclement weather. So I'm waiting. Um, and, and they tell me, uh, I guess it's going to be recorded. And then sometimes I wait so long. Here's the other message. Uh, there's going to be about an hour wait. Would you like for us to call you back? <laughs> Very rarely do I take that option. But I believe sometimes God gives us that option. That he allows us to hang up, but he doesn't want us to give up. Watch this. And this is what I love about that service. It says you won't lose your place in line. I came to prophesy to somebody that if you hold your peace, God will hold your place. But the reason I don't like that option is because as soon as I hang up, I get busy doing something else. And I'm afraid I'm going to miss the call. That's the same strategy of the enemy. He wants you to get distracted. He wants you to have mismanaged focus so that when God does call you back, you no longer believe it. When God does call you back, you no longer have confidence. And so you're not there to answer the call because you didn't know that God's delay is not his denial. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. And I came in to tell somebody, you got to be encouraged. You got to endure heart that's like a good soldier. Remain righteous, remain steadfast, remain unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. God's going to bring everything that he promised to pass. If you believe it, I want you to open your mouth and give God a shout of praise. What's your prophesy to somebody say the call is on the way, the call is on the way. I know you made some mistakes, but if you're staying at the phone, you haven't lost your place. I came to prophesy to somebody. I said, the call is on the way. I said, the call is on the way. See, sometimes things can take so long, you don't want it anymore. But God is reviving my desire. I still want it, and I'm going to wait until the phone call comes my way because God... It's going to answer my prayer. If you believe it, I need everybody to stand to your feet. Give God a wave offering. I speak health to your heart. The Lord is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Go ahead and start praying over yourself. Say, God, strengthen my heart. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my heart. I don't want to be short of breath. Strengthen my heart. Because they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. God, strengthen my heart. I need somebody to prophesy out of your heart. Because you haven't heard a beat in a long time. Because you stopped believing. But I came in to tell you, you can prophesy to your heart. And say, heart, beat again. Heart, hope again. Heart, trust again. Hope again. Let me be honest. I've been through some stuff that took so long I said, I don't even want it anymore. You ever waited on some food or something for so long, and when they finally brought it out, you said, you can keep it. Now, if you were going to let them bring it out, you should have left before they brought it out. So now you're wasting money and an opportunity, wasting time and an opportunity. Sometimes, like Joseph, 
you can wait so long because you've been separated from your brothers that even when they show up, you're not sure if you want them. I'm not sure I want my father anymore because I learned to live without him. I'm not sure if I want reconciliation anymore because they didn't come see about me when I was in the pit. I'm not sure if I want them because I don't need them anymore. But the thing about it is they need you. I don't know if you've ever been tempted to be bitter like that. Can I have a transparent moment? Please don't go tell anybody even though it's going online. Sometimes when prophecy come back and old people are coming back, I'm like, oh, no. Y'all can't, y'all can't get with that. Okay. Behold, I do a new thing. Y'all don't like that. Okay. Let's say your ex want to get back with you. Oh, no. I made it through Valentine's Day and now you want to call? Oh, Then I had to humble myself and say, I want everything that God promised me. Because his delay is not his denial. Sometimes he wants to see can your heart stay soft, even though you've been through something hard. And I want us just to stretch our hands towards heaven. Because I believe the call is coming. The call is coming. Let's look at the back of that text. It says this. It says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And I came here to tell you the desire is coming. It didn't say if the desire cometh. When God said it, he already scheduled it. It says when the desire comes, it's going to be like a tree of life. The tree of life is anything that's going to sustain you and make your suffering worthwhile. Father God, I thank you for these people that are here on today. I thank you that you're strengthening our heart. I thank you that you're strengthening our faith. I thank you, God, that what we went through didn't change us for the worse, but it changed us for the better. And I declare that even what's been delayed in the next 365 days for many people is going to be released. Because they didn't let hope defer, keep their hearts sick. But they allowed you to heal their heart. And God, you won't take us to a new place until you first give us a new heart. I thank you for a heart of flesh. I thank you that you're chiseling away the heart of stone. And you're making us a new creature. And so God... We worship you. And God, we welcome our desire, which is your desire, the tree of life. And we celebrate what's coming is better than what's been. If that's your testimony, I want you to give God some glory.